Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to take care of more features of the explosive, such as damaging the enemy and the character whenever the explosive blows up. Let's get started. Now here's our bullet hit implementation function. And if we want to apply damage to any actors that are overlapping with our overlap sphere, we need more information here. For one, if we're going to call apply damage, we need to know the damage causer and we need the controller of the damage causer as well. So we can add those as input parameters to bullet hit implementation in the interface. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here we have our bullet hit interface here and we have a single function bullet hit. Now we need to add a couple input parameters to this so that whatever gets hit by the bullet has the right information. So for one, I'm going to add an A actor and I'm going to call this shooter. This will be whatever shot the thing that got hit. And next, I'm going to add an A controller and call this instigator. And this will be the controller of whatever it is that shot the thing that got hit. So now that we have two more input parameters here, we need to reconcile this with any classes that implement the bullet hit implementation function. That's going to be the enemy and the explosive. So let's start with the enemy. Here in enemy, here's bullet hit implementation. We need to add those two new input parameters here to this function declaration. So an actor called shooter and a controller called instigator. Now we've added it here to enemy.h, but we also need to add it to enemy.cpp. So I'm going to add them here as well. Now we need to add these input parameters to the bullet hit implementation in explosive. So here's explosive.h, and I'm going to paste in those input parameters here. And in explosive.cpp, I'm going to paste them in here. Now the only other place we need to make a change is where we're calling bullet hit implementation and we call that in shooter character.cpp here in the function called send bullet. We're casting our hit actor to the interface and then we're calling bullet hit implementation. So since we're calling bullet hit implementation here, we need to pass in all the parameters. So the second parameter is an actor and we call this the shooter. That's going to be this because in shooter character.cpp, this is the shooter. Next, we need to pass in the controller. So we're going to pass in get controller. And that way we're passing in the controller and this input parameter is satisfied. Okay, so now that we're passing in the actor that's shooting the bullet, as well as the controller of that actor, we can now use that in the interface function. So here in explosive.cpp, we're going to use this information to call apply damage. So here in our for loop, as we're looping over the actors in all overlapping actors, we're going to call apply damage, which is a gameplay statics function, which means we need to include the gameplay statics header file. Well, we can get that from shooter character because shooter character calls apply damage too. So it has the include for gameplay statics. Let's go up to the top of shooter character and copy the gameplay statics include. So we'll go up here to the top of explosive.cpp and paste in that gameplay statics. Now we can call apply damage. So down here in our for loop, we're going to call apply damage. So it's going to be you gameplay statics apply damage. Now the first argument is going to be the damaged actor and that's going to be actor, the current actor we're iterating over in our overlapping actors array. Next is the damage amount. Now we don't have a damage amount in our explosive class, so we can go ahead and add one. Let's go to explosive.h in the private section and add a float called damage. Now I'm going to copy the U property for overlap sphere just to make this edit anywhere blueprint read write. Now for the comment, I'm simply going to say damage amount for explosive. And we can give this a default value in the constructor in explosive.cpp. So here I'm going to add an initializer list and initialize damage to a value of 100.f. Now back down here in our for loop, we can pass in damage for the damage amount. 
Next, in apply damage, we need a controller, that's the event instigator, and that's going to be our input parameter for bullet hit implementation that we have called instigator. So let's pass in instigator. Next, we need the actor that's the damage causer. And again, we added a new input parameter called shooter of type actor to the implementation function. So let's go ahead and use shooter. Now next is the damage type class and we can just use u damage type static class. That will satisfy that input parameter. So now we're calling apply damage. Now, before we test this out, I'd like to make a couple of changes to our enemy class and the way it takes damage. First, here in enemy.cpp, in bullet hit implementation, we do a few things such as play sound and spawn particles. And then if we're not dying, we haven't already reached zero health, we show the health bar and we stun the enemy if the random value we calculate is less than or equal to stun chance. Now I'd like to show the health bar and attempt to stun the enemy if the enemy takes explosive damage as well. So why don't we put this functionality in take damage instead of bullet hit implementation. So I'm going to copy this code, including the if check to see if the enemy's dying and delete it. And I'm going to go down into take damage here. Now just after applying the damage amount to the health, we can paste this code here. Now, if the enemy just reached zero health, then be dying will be true and none of this other code will run. But otherwise, the enemy can show the health bar and see whether or not a stun will happen. So that way this will happen when the enemy gets shot or damaged by an explosive. Now, before we compile and test this out, we're going to go into agrosphere overlap and place a couple of if checks here just so we don't risk accessing a null pointer. So here in agrosphere overlap, we're accessing enemy controller. Now, if an enemy is already overlapping with the overlap sphere and this gets triggered before the enemy controller is valid, then we'll get a crash. So we need to check this enemy controller first. So if enemy controller, then we know that enemy controller is valid, but then we're also accessing the blackboard component, which means we should check to see if this is valid as well. So we're going to check that. We're going to say if enemy controller get blackboard component. And if that is valid, then it's safe to go ahead and call enemy controller get blackboard component and set that value here. So now that we've fixed this vulnerability, let's go ahead, compile and try this out. Okay, so we get a compiler error because it says the declaration of instigator hides class member. So apparently we can't use instigator. That's going to shadow one of the class member variables. So we're going to have to call this something else. And I think we can just use shooter controller here. So why don't we just call this shooter controller. And I'm going to copy this and we're going to have to replace every instance of this. So let's call it shooter controller here. This is explosive.cpp. Let's go to explosive.h and change this here to shooter controller. And we're going to have to change it in enemy.h as well. Here's bullet hit implementation. We're going to call it shooter controller here and enemy.cpp. Let's find bullet hit implementation and change this to shooter controller. And finally, we need to go to bullet hit interface.h and change it there. And then before we compile, we need to come back here into explosive.cpp in bullet hit implementation. And our call to apply damage must now use this shooter controller input parameter instead of that instigator here. And then finally, the last compiler error we're getting is because we added this return statement here in take damage. And of course, take damage returns a float. So we can't just say if b dying return, we have to return something. And since we're returning damage amount, that's what we'll return here. Okay, go ahead and compile this one last time and this should work. Okay, so we're back in the editor. Let's go ahead and test this out. There goes a enemy and boom, and the enemy is dead.
All right. Now, one thing I want to test out before we wrap this up is what if the explosive doesn't kill the enemy? Is the enemy going to be aggroed and chase the player? So let's see what happens when we don't kill the enemy with explosive damage. So let's open the explosive and let's set the damage to a lower value. So here's damage. Let's set this to, oh, something like 10 and compile and now let's go ahead and blow it up and and the enemy has been aggroed now we can go ahead and kill the enemy and it looks like i have aggroed this enemy so I'll go ahead and kill that one as well. Okay, so that is looking good. So that's going to wrap this video up. We now have an explosive barrel that can damage and even kill the enemy. That's going to conclude this video. I'll see you in the next video.